to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And being that it's the bye week, I figured I would take a quick look into the playoff picture in the NFC East because, after all, somebody from this division has to make the playoffs. And it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm not going to feel bad if we make the playoffs with six or seven wins. Giants fans should know better than anybody. It's about how you finish the season when you go into the playoffs. And if you're hot, who knows what could happen? Not that I'm predicting a Super Bowl. Not that I'm even predicting the playoffs. But if you would ask me three or four weeks ago whether the Giants had any chance in the playoffs, I would have said no. If you ask me today, I would say yes. There's a possibility. Now, is it a strong one? Not yet. I need to see some more things happen throughout the season for both the Giants and the Eagles, and I'll get into that in this video. Now, I'm not going to completely write off the Washington football team or the Dallas Cowboys, but for me, analyzing the schedule and looking at it, I personally don't see Washington winning more than six games on their remaining schedule. I could be wrong, and I think for the Giants to have any chance to get in, it would require six. And if the Giants and Washington tie, the Giants would own the tiebreaker. So I'm writing them off, and I'm not even going to look at their schedule. As far as Dallas goes, Dallas right now is 2-7, and seven, and when I look at the Giants' schedule yet again, one of the games that I think is an absolute must-win game is against the Dallas Cowboys. And in my opinion, if the Giants were to beat the Cowboys, they would own the tiebreaker there. They would be tied in the uh, head, heads-up matchup, but the Giants would own the better divisional record, being that Dallas already has two divisional losses. The Giants have two, and they've already played five divisional games. So if the Giants are to beat the Cowboys and get six wins, which both, I think, are things that absolutely need to happen for, that, for us to have any chance to make the playoffs, I'm going to write those te two teams off. And that's going to leave us with the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants. The Eagles, of course, sit at 3-5-1. and one. The New York Giants at 3-7. and seven. They split on the season series. And we'll see what happens the rest of the way. But let's see if the New York Giants can get in. I wanted to go over both teams' schedules, break it down, and give you guys my, you know, honest, uh, unbiased opinion as to what I could see these teams doing throughout the remainder of the season. So let's jump into, first, the standings. And we'll take a look at the possible tiebreaker scenarios. You have the Eagles at 3-5-1. and one. So when it comes to any tiebreaker scenario with them, I don't think there's going to be a tie. The only way the Giants, Washington, or Dallas could tie with them would be if they got an actual tie within a game. And the odds of that happening are not very likely. The Eagles, of course, tied with the Bengals earlier in the season, and that may prove to be a huge tie for them uh, at the end of the season. They may make the playoffs because of that, or potentially Missed the playoffs because of that. So we'll have to see how the rest of the remaining schedule plays out for both of these teams. As far as Washington and Dallas goes, like I said earlier, if you look on the right-hand side, both Washington and Dallas have two divisional losses. If the Giants and Washington were to tie, the Giants get in no matter what because they have two heads-up wins. If Giants and the and the, and Dow, the Dallas Cowboys were to, and if the Giants were to beat the Dallas Cowboys, rather, the last game of the season, they would own the tiebreaker on them, being that Dallas already has two divisional losses, they would have split the season series, and the Giants would hand Dallas their third divisional loss. So the Giants sit good in the tiebreaker scenarios if they were to beat Dallas the last week, which, in my opinion, their only possibility of making the playoffs more than likely will be having to beat Dallas that last week of the season, being that 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 may be their easiest game left on the schedule, the way Dallas is playing right now with their quarterback situation. But let's jump into the schedule for both these football teams. First, we're going to look at the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm going to be streaming this game on Sunday. We're off this week, and, I'll, and I'm definitely going to probably stream that Monday night game as well against the Seattle Seahawks as things are starting to get down to the nitty-gritty. The Eagles, coming in at 3-5-1, and one, play at Cleveland this week. Now, Cleveland has a very strong ground attack. As a matter of fact, it's probably the best ground attack in football. In that game, however, from what I've seen, Conklin, their best run blocker, I believe is going to be out due to COVID. That may have a big effect in that game. Chubb will be back with the Browns. He's one of the better running backs in football, and they certainly could use him. The Eagles are completely banged up, but... You can definitely throw on Cleveland. I don't think this is a gimme game at all, even with it being in Cleveland. But if I had to pick, I would lean towards the Cleveland Browns in this game, being that they're at home. I definitely think they're a very beatable team, though. Seattle at home the following week. Seattle has not looked as hot as of late, but I'm still going Russell Wilson. I don't see the Philadelphia Eagles keeping up with Russell Wilson and that offense. The Eagles' offense has looked putrid. Their defense, we've carved up both times we've played them. So... I just don't see it. I, I don't see how they keep up with Russell Westbrook. 
at Green Bay. I don't know how I could pick the Eagles. The Eagles are pesky, though. They went there last year on a Thursday night football game and were able to beat them. But again, that's another really tough game. Then you got the New Orleans Saints, same story. Now, Breeze may be out for that game. He's out right now. I'm not sure what the timeline is there. If he were out, Jameis Winston would be in the game. But the Saints, to me, still have the best offensive line in football, um, and they have a very well-rounded team, and they're starting to hit their stride. I would definitely lean Saints in that game as well. And at Arizona, I think you'd have to go with Arizona. Of course, that's right now. Things could change. Players could get injured. Teams could start to turn the corner. But if I'm being fair, I will give the... I'm not going to say they go 0-5. I'll say the Eagles find a way to win one of those games. I'll go 1-4 and with the Eagles over that five-game stretch. But that Cleveland game is perhaps the most winnable this week. So if the Eagles, if the Eagles were to lose that game, in my opinion, at best, I see them going 1-3 and three over that five-game stretch. If they were to win the Cleveland game, maybe they go 2-3 and three over this five-game stretch. And if they were to go 2-3, and three, that would set them at five wins with two very winnable games at the end of the schedule. If the Eagles win seven games, it's lights out. The Giants ain't making the playoffs. I don't see the Giants going 8-8. Eight and eight. That's what it would require. The Giants would have to go 5-1 and one over their last six games. If they were to win six games, I still wouldn't give the Giants a great possibility. And if the Eagles were to win two out of their next five, they would have at least six wins by year's end, in my opinion, at 6-9-1. and Because at worst, I think they split with the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington football team. So, there you have it. If you want the Giants to have any possibility to get in with six wins, I think the Eagles would have to win one out of the next five or possibly get swept. But if they win one and uh, there's a good possibility they wouldn't be able to sweep both Dallas and Washington. But those are five very challenging games coming up and it's what gives New York Giants fans hope. But it all starts with the Cleveland Browns. In terms of the Giants schedule, you got at Cincinnati, you got at Seattle. Uh, They're playing similar teams. um, And that's what's going to decide the race. The Eagles play both Seattle Arizona, Cleveland, they play those three teams, and Dallas. So if we have four common opponents over these last six games, as far as the Giants' schedule, you know, how I'm going to break it down, the Giants coming off a bye, yeah, you could worry about them coming out a little weak against the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, after all, we just played two teams coming off, an, uh, coming off a bye, and maybe the Giants took advantage of that. But I personally think Joe Judge will have this team prepared. I think with an extra week to prepare, for Patrick Graham, the Giants have a very good chance to win this game against the rookie quarterback with Joe Burrow. Burrow has 12 touchdowns on the year. Half of them came against the Cleveland Browns in two games. In his other seven contests, he only has six. I think the Giants will be able to do some damage. A lot of people seem to think, the, you know, maybe you think the Browns have a good defense. They don't. They actually rank 20th. I think it's in yards or points against. And when you factor in how good of a running offense the Browns have, Um, It definitely masks that defense. So I'm not too impressed with Burrow's numbers when you really look at it. I know his yards are high, but I think a lot of that's a garbage time with the team playing catch-up. He's still a good quarterback, and I think he's got a very bright future, but I think the Giants could take advantage of him. I really do believe we're going to win that football game and win our third straight for the first time since 2016. Then you have your four most challenging games on the schedule. Let's go ahead and give us a win the last game of the schedule because we have no chance to make the playoffs if we don't. And I think that's a very winnable game with the with you know at home with the injuries to the Dallas Cowboys at the quarterback position. So if we were to win the Cincinnati and Dallas game, that would give us five wins. For us to win, for us to win six and get in, the Eagles would have to go two and five over their schedule. And if you think they'd win that last two, those last two, that would mean they'd have to get swept over the next five. Um, so seven wins is probably what it will take. And for them to win seven, they'd have to win two out of those middle four. Now, which are the most likely for the New York Giants to win? Like I said, Seattle doesn't look like they're hitting on all cylinders right now. They definitely got some holes on their roster. And I don't look at any of these games and look at them as impossible to win. If you would ask me five weeks ago, four weeks ago, three weeks ago, I would have said there's no chance we could beat Baltimore. But the way the Giants have played the last two or three weeks and the way Baltimore has looked, I do think there's at least a slight possibility we could beat Baltimore. I wouldn't write the Giants off in any of these matchups. You, you know, you'd have Arizona coming across the country. Um, and they have holes to their game, no doubt about it. They hit on the big Hail Mary pass. Kyle Murray will be a handful, but Arizona's defense isn't very good. I think you, they, they could potentially win that game, especially if they could establish the ground game and keep Murray off the field. As far as Cleveland goes, it comes down to stopping their run. Their defense doesn't impress me. If you could stop the run, I do think the New York Giants will have an opportunity to win that game. 
But for them to make the playoffs, more than likely, it's going to require two wins in those middle four, and they're going to have to win the two on the end and go four and two over the last six. That would get them to seven wins and more than likely get the New York Giants to the NFL playoffs. If they were to win one out of those four, you'd still have a slight chance at six and ten, but you would need the Eagles to only win uh, two out of their last seven games, and that would be asking a lot, being that they have two very winnable games at the end of it, even though their first five are hard. But we'll see. Six wins gives them a chance. Seven wins, in my opinion, almost certainly will get them into the postseason. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. We've got a big game in two weeks coming up against the Cincinnati Bengals, and without that, you could pretty much write the playoffs off. That is a must-win contest, being that I think we stack up good against them, and it's one of our most winnable games left on the schedule. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.